Hey everybody, this is Joshua with the Tendonitis Expert. And this video is about the most important thing about biceps tendon rupture. So let's start with where it can rupture. So you can get a tear, which is just another name for a rupture, either partial or complete, up at the shoulder on one of the two heads, or down at the elbow. And generally, you're not going to have a tear in the muscle. It's almost always where tendon meets bone or muscle starts to turn into tendon. Those are the, the weaker spots. So the most important thing to know is what actually causes the rupture. Because your doctor will tell you that, well, you got a tear right here, and so therefore that's the problem. And admittedly that is a problem because there's a tear. But the cause of that tear is more important. And the cause wasn't that you were lifting weights or you were playing sports or doing pull-ups or lifting a beer can or whatever. That isn't what caused the rupture. What caused the rupture is the overall ecology of the bicep structure. And here's the thing about that. So we think that, so if here's muscle and that turns into tendon, Muscle, then we think that the tendon, when it tears, it tears because it's weak, and that's not true. It is not because the yeah, that's terrible. It is not because the tendon is weak. That's false. The problem is, and what causes tears is a lack of function. So you have some bicep muscles and you're doing whatever you're doing, so this muscle is contracting short and long, and your forearm is getting pulled this way, and then it's let go so it goes that way, and then you do it again. When all that is happening, and especially if there's like a barbell that you're lifting, for instance, to add additional weight, then again we think that while the tendon is the weak spot, it's actually not. What is the weak spot is the function of the muscle. So the purpose, or I should say the job of a muscle is to absorb force. So as you're lifting the weight back and forth, etc., the muscle is performing work and it's absorbing force. But here's the problem. When a muscle is not functioning very well, and one way of saying that is when a muscle is optimal when it's at this length, at rest, but then over time and use, it becomes tight and short. So you can imagine that it's missing, I don't know, 40% of its ability to work right there, if this is the new normal right here. And then connective tissue shrink wraps over time, so you're literally stuck short and tight. So not only are you able to do less work over time, but you have less force being absorbed. And when force isn't being absorbed by the muscle, where do you think that goes? It's, that force has to go somewhere. And that force goes to some place like, surprise, where tears happen. So again, it's not that the tendon itself is weak, it's that there's too much force going somewhere it's not supposed to go, and that is going to cause damage eventually sooner or later. And yes, you can have tendonitis, and yes, you can have inflammation and irritation and damage to a tendon before that happens, certainly. Yes, you can have tendinosis, which means that the tendon's not getting enough circulation, so the cells die of starvation, and that can make a tendon weak. That's true. But the most important thing about injury and rupture is that it's not the tendon, it's not where it tears that is the cause of that. There was no accident, there was no failing of the tendon. It's that your structure, your mechanism, from here to here, the ecology, was not working correctly. You had too much tightness, generally you're gonna have chronic inflammation, and nutritional insufficiency. And that is going to decrease function, and that is going to increase risk of damage because that force, when you're doing anything, it force has to go somewhere. If the muscle is not absorbing it, then it has to go to a tendon or a tendon attachment or farther up the, like if it's in a leg, it's going to go farther up the leg to a knee or a hip, etc., your low back. That force goes somewhere. We want the muscles to absorb it. And when they're not, that's where rupture and damage happens. So, 
there's that. And that really is the cause of tendon rupture. It's not the activity, it's not the weight. You know, obviously if a car drops on you, that's going to be its own problem. But just normal use and activity and even high-level athletics, injury doesn't come generally from accident. Injury becomes comes from muscles not working as they should. They're not able to perform the amount of work or absorb the amount of force they're supposed to. And then you do something and you get a tear because the force goes to a weak the force goes to a spot, the force is too much for that spot, and then eventually that's going to cause damage. So that's the most important thing about bicep tendon rupture. It's not the weak spot, and the tendon's not weak, it's that the muscle structures are not working properly. So if you want to find out more about that, go to my website, tendonitisexpert.com, and find the appropriate page.